Hello everyone, my name is Tim and this is the Warehouse Series. I welcome you to the channel. Uh, today we are going to be doing a video. Basically, it's all the same person's work. Uh, that, uh, this person uh, posted it on uh, Discord and I told this person that I think they build really good pallets and I would like to do a whole video about this because it's good to see other people's work besides my own and see what other people are doing. Now, whether or not you learned this on your own or if you learned this off of my channel, I have no idea. But a lot of the techniques you're going to see in here that I'm going to go over are techniques that I teach on this channel. So without further ado, if you're not a subscriber, if you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Uh, so let's do that. Let's take a look at the first picture. This one right here. Uh, the only thing I like to say is, is that we do have a tower. I got double yellow arrows down here just pointing to their towers going up. But what do you notice? We got the thicker, heavier cases on the outside. And we got the skinnier, lighter cases on the inside. You want light cases in the middle, heavier cases on the outside. If this column was vice versa, then if we even just went around the bend, this whole entire middle column would push our light corner over in a heartbeat. So even though this is column stacked, it's column stacked properly because if this person needed to, which they obviously did not, you could just throw a thing of wrap around the middle of this pallet real quick and you could go about your way. Uh, the next picture I want to show is this one right here. The one thing I want you to notice on a lot of these pictures I'm going to show you is that when I, I say all the time, when you establish a base, which is usually around waist high, which this is, my red bracket is showing their base. When you establish a solid base, now I apologize if my voice is a little raspy. I'm a big hockey fan and I've been screaming at the TV lately and uh, during the playoffs here. <laughs> so, but solid base. And then what do we got on my red slashes up above? We got high corners, low inside. High corners, low inside. The only thing I would have did on the far side where my little red dot's at is I would have slid that corner over a little bit, to, or I mean that case over a little bit to space it out. And my red slash in the middle is just showing you that, what, what are they doing? Pointing in towards the middle and pointing back that center column. That's exactly how I train you guys on this channel. Whether or not this person did this beforehand, I don't know. But it's not the prettiest thing up here, but it doesn't matter because they have a base established. And that's what I'm trying to tell you is once you get the base established, you could throw this a lot quicker up here and you can make up time. Get a base, take more time building the base and less time building your top. All right, in this picture right here, I, you know, I think this is really important. This is something that I noticed that a couple of my trainees do, but right where my yellow arrow is pointing down here, what are they doing? They're keeping their pallets nice and square and nice and separated. I see way too many times that people get their cases hanging off and they like almost like interlock their two pallets together. So then when they pick them up and separate them, there's cases catching on to each other and they drop their stuff when they separate it. Guys, square pallets, perimeter of the pallet, imaginary lines. This is exactly what this person's doing in these pictures right here or in this uh, order right here. There's no doubt you could find the separation on this. Uh, the black arrow that I'm pointing to up above, what do you notice? What do you notice on this entire order? This is the only case I could find on its side and it's a solid case. It's serial. It's at the top of the pallet. It's not going to have any harm of being on its side. Now, if that case was all the way down at the bottom, would I turn on its side? I don't know. It depends on what I'm throwing on top of it. If it was all serial, then yes, I would. But they got weight down here. So you, that's the part of knowing your warehouse. Uh, you know, I, but do you see cases on their sides? Do you see Cloroxes on their sides? Do you see everything is upright? This is what I'm talking about. Cases are meant to be upright. They are not meant to be on their sides. That's the only case I could find on this side. So great palette, great stack. Let's get on to the next picture. This one right here, my little yellow slash is at the bottom. What am I showing you? I'm showing you nice separation gaps. We're allowed to have gaps in our base. Let's just take the time to separate them. So if I have two cases and I have another case here, and then I put a case on the back corner and I got a gap like this, just take the time to slide this case over and limit the gaps. I hope that makes sense. Make your gaps limited. We don't want big gaps in our base. Uh, so the slashes down there are showing you that. And then look, what do we got with all my red slashes going all the way around this pallet? High corner, low inside. High corner, low inside. High corner, low inside. High corner, low inside. 
It's not, guys, this is exactly what I'm showing. This is exactly what I'm teaching. And I want to show other people's work because this palette is perfect. Establish the base. Now, this is actually just nice all the way up because they had the product to do so. But let's get on to the next picture. All right, so on this one right here, what are they doing? My yellow circle. We're grouping these stupid waters together because people like to separate this stuff all over their palette. The only time that I will actually layer this off on a palette is if I'm up higher on my palette and I have a level layer to stack on. So if all my product's the same and I got a nice level layer and it's probably chest high, then I will put this on a whole layer. But if I'm any lower, I like to group it together like this person did right here. Uh, next picture, it's the same palette. We're looking at the front end of it. What do we got? Red bracket showing a nice solid base. And then my yellow slash is over here. Keeping the, we, we go right back to my basis. Case is pointing in and case is pointing back. You know, I see people where after the uh, bottom yellow slash, those green bottles, they'll, they'll go like this and turn the, uh, try to, you know, change the pattern. No, keep it the same way, just like this person has it. We got all these cases pointing the same way. We got the oats, the coffee, all pointing the same way, uh, keeping the weight going. We don't have to worry about switching cases all over the place because we have a strong base established. So establish the strong base. And then on top, you can get away with doing this stuff because your palette's not going to go anywhere. All right, guys, on this picture right here, there's a lot going on. Let me explain myself. The first thing I want to look at is the yellow dot down on the bottom. So we got the Pringles on the outside. Did we stick a higher case on the inside? No. If Let's say this case might not have came for a while. Maybe I leave that gap there. I know what kind of case I'm looking for. Okay, now I don't know if this person did this or not, but let's say that gap was there. Am I going to shove a case in there? Am I going to stick a big case in there and then have my Pringles lower and have the inside higher? No, I'm going to wait until I get a case to fit where that yellow dot's at. Now, whether or not this person did that or not, I don't know, but I would have. If I have to wait, I'm going to wait because I know I got a gazillion different size cases coming up. So why am I going to fill that gap in with, say, uh, the Quaker that's on top of it, those oats that are on top of it? Am I going to squeeze that in there if it's not going to fit? No, I wait. So the yellow dot showing that, hey, I got a case that's going to fit in here. It's going to uh, be pretty darn close to being level to my Pringles. And then I tie in the next layer. And guess what? I'm just going to tie in every single one the same way. My yellow slashes are showing you that you can get away with doing this once you establish a base. Case is pointing in. Smaller cases in the middle of the palette, straight up. All those light, small cases where my yellow slash is perfectly done. That's exactly how I build. Uh, the only thing I probably would have done differently is I probably wouldn't have stuck those checks like that in that part of the palette with the cans. I, I just noticed that. Uh, the video that I put out on Wednesday, uh, they got that going on here a little bit, uh, but it's still a good palette. I just, me personally, uh, I wouldn't have done that. The cans, the check mix, and all that. See how, I, I want to prove my point to my last video. So we put the cans down. See how we just force ourselves to keep towering? Once you put one case in that part of the palette that I dislike, you find yourself doing that the whole way up. So we get this tower that's going like this, that's easy to rock out and fall over. So keep that in mind. Uh, I could, you know, could have put that on my last video. Uh, but other than that, very well built palette. Next order here, guys. I don't know if some of these orders are repeats, but uh, this one here, once again, what do we got in my yellow brackets? We got nice bases established. And then after that, what do we got? We got high corners, low inside. Same person throughout this whole video. Very well built palettes. Let's get on to the next one. All right, this picture right here, I got nothing drawn on it. It's a thing of beauty. Perfectly built palette. Uh, I just want to throw it on here. Uh, it, once again, guys, Looks like everything in here is matched up perfectly, uh, tied in beautifully. So let's get on to the next picture. All right, this one here. Uh, so I always say that if you could put a house on stilts, then we could separate our base. All right. I, I, I said that whenever I did the perishable videos, because I would separate my juices out. If a house could stand on stilts, then my palette could stand on a base that's separated because I don't want to be hanging off the side of my palette. I want to stay within the perimeter of that palette. Right here, nice gaps between these uh, crates down here. And that's my point. And the next layer, all right, so follow me on this. All right, so I got those yellow dots showing you how we're taking, and follow my red line. 
See how we got that case hanging in the gap? Well, what did we do? We walked that point of contact of being in the gap over here. We walked it over this way. We transferred the weight distribution away from that gap by the way we stacked these cases. I hope that makes sense. Now where my white arrows are at, picture if we would have just column stacked right on top of these two white arrows. Now we got all this weight right into the gap because all the weight is right on top of that gap and it's gonna fall in and it's gonna push this corner over. I hope this makes sense. So you column stack on top of a gap, you're gonna get the gap to fall. You're gonna push all that weight right into the gap. But when you stack like this, you're walking the weight away from the gap. I hope that makes sense. Let's get on to the last picture. All right, so right here, same uh, palette, but this is the front. I just want to show this on my X. What do I say? We had a low corner and a high inside. So what did we do? We put a bigger case with the, uh, what is that, like that Clamata juice or whatever it is, and we put the smaller case in the middle. We crossed the cases. We had, so I hope that makes sense. High, low corner, high inside. We put a higher case on the corner and a lower case on the inside. You get your high uh, corner again. It's that simple. So just because you have a low corner and a high inside doesn't mean you can't rotate. The only thing I would say, the only time that doesn't work is if your low corner is a very small case. So if I have like a salad dressing here and this really big case here, well, that salad dressing is really hurting my corner. That's why it's important to put big, strong cases on your corner. You know, so you want a nice, solid case. So we have enough surface to do this. If a salad dressing is not giving us enough surface to switch back over if we get a higher case, because maybe it's a wider case. Hope that makes sense. All dedicated to your uh, pictures today. Uh, guys, that's the part of Discord that is really unique. If you wanna join Discord, link in the description below. Got well over 200 people over there helping each other out. And the, uh, the, the interaction on uh, Discord has been getting a lot uh, bigger every day. And there's constantly people over there helping new uh, trainees out, new employees, people that haven't even started in the warehouse yet watching my videos and coming over here and talking and getting a really good idea of what warehousing is about before they even start. Guys, welcome to the channel. I hope you have a great day. I'll see you next time.